If you frequent certain corners of the internet and academia, trigger warnings are ubiquitous. But what does it actually mean to be triggered? What does it feel like? I'm about to tell you. I'm Jen Tatro, and this is From Jen. A year ago, I would have told you that being triggered was something that happened to other people. I think I imagined it was like being hit by a freight train of emotion, sort of like when Wednesday Adams experiences a vision. That was before I learned I had complex PTSD and before I figured out how to identify what it felt like when symptoms were being triggered in my body. And before I realized I was actually being triggered on a pretty regular basis. I'm not a therapist, so everything I'm about to describe is based just on my personal experience and research. My experience may not match everybody else's. In fact, it probably doesn't. If you've experienced your own triggers and are willing to share, I would love to hear about what we have in common and what we don't. Uh, just leave a comment and we can talk about it. Before I get into the details, there are two psychological terms that you need to know dissociation and dysregulation. Dissociation is the feeling of disconnecting from your thoughts, your feelings, and even your surroundings. Everyone has moments of dissociation when we're daydreaming, for example, but it happens more regularly with certain mental disorders and taken to an extreme, dissociation can even result in dissociative identity disorder or what used to be called multiple personalities. Dysregulation, on the other hand, is when it becomes difficult to control your emotions at all. When feelings go far beyond what's reasonable for the situation. That could mean bursts of irrational anger or overwhelming sadness or extreme anxiety or even impulsivity around things like shopping, eating, or drinking. If you've ever been hangry, if you've ever been irrationally grumpy because you haven't eaten recently, you've had a taste of what it's like to be dysregulated. The reason I wanted to define those two terms is that they're central to how triggers work. And I'll be talking about each of them later. In its simplest form though, a trigger is simply something that reminds you of past trauma and causes a reaction in the body. That event could be something as simple as a smell, a sound, a turn of phrase, or an image. It's the way your body reacts to those triggers that makes them so difficult. Some people may experience full-blown flashbacks to traumatic events. But for me, and this seems to be common amongst those with complex or childhood PTSD, the most common reactions I get are those two conditions I defined earlier, dissociation and dysregulation. The severity of my personal response to any given trigger can vary depending on a lot of factors. How significantly I feel the trigger could impact my life, how many other triggers I've experienced recently, my current stress levels, where I'm at in my monthly cycle, how tired I am, how well I've been hewing to my self-care practices, and any number of other variables. Let me give you an example. Medical tests are a huge trigger for me. Any mention of them really, from a television ad promoting regular mammograms, to blood pressure checks at my doctor's office, to waiting for results from my husband's cancer scans. I'm honestly, feeling mildly triggered right now, just talking about this in a neutral context. <sighs> the first thing I usually feel is a cold panic, like ice water racing through my veins. If you've ever stepped into a cold shower, you can approximate the feeling. There's a moment where the water hits you and your breath catches and for a split second, you're incapable of reacting at all. You're just frozen. That reaction makes sense if you've just fallen into an icy lake because it wouldn't do to take an involuntary breath and fill your lungs with water in that situation. It's the beginning of the body's fight, flight, or freeze reaction. And that's a necessary response when your life is in danger. It's less necessary when your doctor orders a cholesterol screening. The cold panic is a 
physical reaction. Sometimes it's coupled with other physical reactions, like shivers or a racing heart or tightness in my chest or tremors in my hands. That's followed by either dissociation or dysregulation, which are more mental reactions. If I experience dissociation in that moment, I might not even hear the doctor's next instructions as my brain just disengages from my surroundings. Or in a more subtle reaction, right now, I feel this almost desperate need to just leave this video and escape into a novel. I can tell that I'm dissociating while I'm reading because generally I could not tell you the plot of novels I've read sometimes even a few days after finishing them. Dysregulation for me usually means bursting into tears. Once a friend found me bawling in my car because he was 10 minutes late to meet me. Occasionally I'll find myself crying because a particularly large restaurant menu makes it too difficult for me to choose or because I can't find a parking space or because I have to make a telephone call. In a lot of ways, dysregulation is the opposite of dissociation, right? Instead of separating myself from my emotions in the face of something triggering, the trigger forces all of my held back emotions back to the surface. If dissociation is a dam, dysregulation is a flood. You might wonder why if being triggered causes such intense physical, mental, and emotional reactions, it took me so long to realize that I had PTSD. <laughs> the answer to that is pretty simple. I thought that what I was feeling was normal. The whole point of trigger responses is for the brain to protect itself from unprocessed trauma. And my brain was working overtime. I dissociated so hard, I didn't notice the physical reactions at all. I thought the random tears were just part of my personality. I thought everyone had certain topics they went out of their way to avoid. And keep in mind, minor triggers happen every day. They happen multiple times a day. As someone who has probably had complex PTSD since she was six, I really had no idea that there was another way to live. I hope that this brief description has given you at least a glimpse into what PTSD triggers are, how it feels to be triggered, and the psychological reasons for those responses. As I said earlier, if you experience them differently than I do, I would love to hear about that, along with any questions you might have for me. Also, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're already subscribed, did you know that you can hit that bell icon to actually get an email when I update? Until next time, I'm wishing you love and joy and all those good things. And I can't wait to talk to you again. Do